In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to do print and cut with the Trotec laser using job control vision. What is print and cut? Basically, for those that don't know, print and cut is where we're printing in full color, typically on a substrate, such as laser plastic or acrylic or wood, and we're using a laser machine to cut out that printed image. The way that we orientate the printed image is we use a camera to read the registration marks. And you can see that I've got some registration marks that are printed on this material here. The reason we have to use registration marks is because when we print the artwork, it's not exactly in the right location in terms of the XY coordinates on the table. And because we have this issue, then we need to use the camera so that the camera can go out and read the registration marks, and then it can take the cut file that we've imported that we use to print the material. We can use this cut file to cut out the material properly. And it's very important that we have a very fast system, a very accurate system, and the Trotec Job Control Vision is perfect for that. It is an excellent system. It's fast. It will read the, the registration marks. It will accurately place the artwork so that it doesn't matter where we put this material on the bed. I can put it wherever I want. The laser machine is going to go out and it's going to read it. And that's what we want. Fast, easy. You don't have to have any, any, any mistakes or anything like that because the last thing you want to do is, you know, print six millimeter acrylic, and then when we go to cut it, it's not lining up properly. So again, this video is really going to show you how easy it is to do that. When it comes to the Trotec lasers, when it comes to job control vision on those lasers, we have the Speedy 300, we have the Speedy 360, the Speedy 400, and the SP500. Any one of those four systems you can put a job control vision camera on and you can either do it when you purchase a machine or if you've already got a machine, then we can put that camera typically on those machines. For this lesson, I'm just going to use a white printed piece of paper here with black and white image, which is the Trotec T, and you can see that I've got three registration marks on the paper. I'm going to do this because then it's easy, it cut quick, and you'll see how accurate it cuts this image out here. I, I'm not even going to have to use really any bleed. You might have to use a little bit of bleed, depending on the material you're, you're working with. Um, sometimes we need to use a little bit more um, area uh, in terms of bleed when we're doing um, fabrics, um, because sometimes if we you know, heat press uh, the sublimation ink uh, onto the onto the onto the fabric. We're going to get some stretching and everything like that. So, but the the bleed line is going to be very very small, and you'll see that when it cuts this out, it's going to be perfect. So let's take a look at how to do this. It's very easy, very quick, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. There are three compensation types that job control vision will account for. The first one is position and rotation. You can see from the image, the image position and rotation are compensated and the size and the shape will remain unchanged. So basically what's happening here is that the artwork will stay the same size but if we're in a different location on the table than the artwork, or we've got a rotation, then the software will account for that. When we look at linear distortion, what we're looking at here is position, rotation, and size. All three are compensated. The size of the cutting path is changed linearly. In the third type of compensation type, we've got a nonlinear distortion. And what's going on here is that we've got position, rotation, size, and shape are compensated. So any one of those can be out, 
and the size and the shape of the cutting path is then adjusted. This is a very complicated process that the job control camera accounts for and it does it very quickly. Let's take a look at the job control vision camera. You notice here that the job control vision camera is already loaded on the bracket and it's attached to the laser head itself. I can release that quite easy. I've taken out the two set screws that normally will sit in here and then I'm just gonna lightly bring this out. You notice that it releases quite simple. It's very light to the touch and the reason for this um, is we're traveling at such fast speeds that we don't want to introduce any weight. Um, the more weight we have, the more time we need to slow down when we're moving. So the lighter the camera is, the faster that we can go. You notice that I have a little cutout here, and that's where we would slide it into the bracket right here. On the bottom is where the camera itself is, and you'll notice that I've got a clear acrylic lens that goes over the camera itself. This will protect it from the dust and the smoke while we're actually using the camera when we're cutting out materials. There is a set screw here on the back side, and that allows us to take out uh, a lens and replace it uh, if it gets damaged due to uh, maybe a excess flaming or if it's just uh, getting some splatter or or just dust itself um, and then we can't clean it off anymore. Those are provided in the package with the camera itself. Now when I want to put the camera back on again it's quite simple. You'll notice that I've got some male pin connectors here at the top of the of the camera itself and on the on the bracket itself here on the head you'll notice that I've got the female connectors here and there's eight pins here um, and that'll and basically everything will automatically line up because I'm actually sliding in on the bracket itself so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my camera this way I'm going to slide it on and as I come close I'm going to put my finger on the back here and I'm just going to put my thumb in around the middle that will force it to come in fairly square and then I'm going to push and it connects very quickly. You notice the light comes back on so the laser is actually activating the camera as we plug it right in. So it's quite quick and it's quite easy to, to mount and if I want to take it off it's very easy. And a lot of times I, you know, I'm not going to engrave with the camera on if I'm doing stuff that I don't need the camera. Um, it, again, it, it, it does introduce a little bit more weight. There's really no sense turning the camera up if I don't really need to use it for the purpose that it's been designed for. So you can see on the screen that I've got the print cut file loaded up into Ruby. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to align the red dot pointer at the first dot that I'm going to read. Now, in this example, the laser machine is going to start at the top right hand corner, and then it's going to work to the bottom left hand corner, and then to the top left corner. So it basically is three dots, and it will progressively go through each dot and read it, and then progress to the, to the next dot, or execute the job. You can see from the screen that I've indicated where each one of these locations are. So you can see the red dot pointer over top of the black dot in the artwork that I printed on the table. You can see from the, the left-hand image that the dot is pointing to the first dot on the paper and you can see that the red dot pointer is is indicated on the ruby desktop now this is very important because if i 
if I orientate the red dot pointer at the location on Ruby in terms of lining up the artwork, then the machine is going to turn on, it's going to see the first dot, and then it's going to pro it's going to read it, and then it's going to progress to the next one and read that one, and then go to the final one and read that one. This is how I would set up a print job where when we put in the printed substrate, the printed substrate is going to be fairly square, meaning that I don't have any rotation on the printed substrate, and therefore it's going to, when the camera moves from each dot, the dot is going to be within the field that it can see, and it's going to easily locate that dot and then move to the next one. And you'll see from the example, when it runs, this is exactly what's going to happen. So all I need to do now is just move the artwork so that it intersects with the red dot pointer on the screen in Ruby. This will be very quick and easy. And once I've got it here, I can just keep repeating the job. In the next section of this video, I'm gonna take a look at a couple of different scenarios that we normally see in with the job control vision camera um, reading registration marks. The first is when the substrate that we're working with is put into the machine and the registration marks are square, meaning that where they are on the table uh, is gonna be easily read by the camera as it traverses from one registration mark to the other. The nice thing about doing this is that the read of the registration marks is very accurate and very quick. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And as long as it's close, it's even gonna be hard for me to, sh to show you this, even if I try to slow it down. In the second scenario, we're actually gonna rotate the, the printed substrate so that it'll find the first registration mark. And when it goes to find the second registration mark, because of the rotation, the mark is gonna be outside the readable field. So we're gonna to have to help the software move to that next registration mark and help it read that mark. The nice thing is once it reads that mark, it'll go to the third mark, easily read it. Now we've shown the software where that second mark is, so it's gonna easily traverse to the third mark and then it will activate and then do a successful cut for us. So let's see how job control vision works on this printed substrate. So we started a job. You can see that the software is now preparing the device. I'm reading the first registration mark. You can see on the screen that it's picking it up. I'm now gonna to move to the second registration mark and the third, and now we're ready to cut the piece and here we go. You can see that it's quite fast, very smooth. And when we remove this T, off the table, you're going to see that there's no white part of the paper, which would have indicated that I that for some reason we didn't read this artwork properly. You can see it's perfect. In this next section, we're going to take a look at how to read the registration marks on a printed substrate where that substrate has been rotated. Before we get going, I just want to point out, if you're going to repeat the job on a number of printed substrates of the same artwork, then make sure that you remove the completed job from queue. This will allow you to keep pressing the repeat button as we, won't, we will not be deleting the job from the queue. As you can see, the camera is going to read the first registration mark very quickly. However, when it goes down to to the location where it thinks the second registration mark, the rotation is move that registration mark out of that location. So we're gonna to need to help the camera find that registration mark. And we do that by moving the left, right, or up or down buttons on the control panel. Once we move the, once we move the camera so we can see the registration mark, then we can accept that location and then it will quickly go and read that mark and then the third mark and then go through the cutting process.
Thanks for watching today, and I hope you've learned something about the Job Control Vision hardware, software, and how valuable it is for any business that's looking to integrate into their production process. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. And if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section.